treasure that is you. He calls me, he has made me a peculiar treasure. I'm so peculiar. I'm so glad I'm God's peculiar treasure. Thank you, Jesus. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice, indeed, and keep my call. be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people above all people for the end is mine I'm so glad I'm God's peculiar treasure I'm so glad thank you Jesus number four person Another character to be considered is Simon Peter, the brave defender. Have you seen a scenario of when your lover wants to ignorantly prevent you from fulfilling purpose? I remember an old woman sharing a testimony one day, and she talked about how much her father loved her, that he didn't allow her to go to school because her father, according to her, didn't want any teacher to beat or scold her. Apparently, the father's love prevented Aha of having formal education like other children in the community. What a love. <laughs> what a love. Some love in quotes, love, love in quotes, can rob people of their great destiny. For God to be looking at Jesus to be crucified didn't indicate he didn't love his son. But God wanted his son to fulfill divine destiny. It even got to a point that Jesus thought his father has forsaken him. Yeah, many children can identify with this also. I once thought my mother was wicked so God did Mama Ego for Jesus. How do you handle your children? Nobody is talking about child abuse here. Some of us parents cannot deal with the cry of our children for a second. We don't want them to face any challenge in life. We want to go through everything for them. Huh? Some out of love, love, in quote, refuse to place demand on the grace of God upon their children's life. We better learn from God himself. He allow his son to go through in order to break through and then break forth into his glory. I haven't said you shouldn't help your children, but there's a saying that says, when parents do too much, for their children, the children will not do much for themselves. Oh, Pira! Like some people will say, Peter, out of love, tried to stop Jesus from being taken by the Romans' guard. He went to the extent of bringing out his sword to attack, even succeeded in cutting off the ears of the high priest servant before Jesus stopped him. John chapter 18, verse 10 to 11 says, Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Marcus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the father has given me? Jesus was like asking Peter, don't you want me to fulfill my destiny? Hmm? In Matthew chapter 26, 53 to 54, Jesus said, Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. Jesus was saying that it is not that I couldn't run away from this challenge, but I need to fulfill my destiny even though what I am going through is not palatable. Jesus quickly stopped the stopper. The stopper could be your lover. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how hard it must have been for the disciples to accept that Jesus must die to fulfill his plan as Messiah and there was nothing they could do to help or stop it. They did not fully understand yet why Jesus must die and they even doubted before they saw him again after his resurrection. Peter failed to protect the Messiah and save him from the cross. But later, he understood that it wasn't Jesus who needed saving. We do. We do. Oh, what grace God bestowed on us. 
He loves me. I cannot say why. He loves me. I cannot tell why. He loves me. I cannot tell why. Uncover his tree. Suffer for me. He loves me. I cannot tell why. He loves me. I cannot tell why. Hey. He loves me. I can't. I cannot tell why He loves me I cannot tell why He loves me I cannot tell why You can enjoy our productions, previous and new ones on our Facebook pages, God's Peculiar Treasures International Ministry or God's Peculiar Treasures International and also our YouTube channel, GPTIM TV. And of course, do not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That will be well appreciated. We also encourage you to click on the notification button to be alerted when new videos drop. God bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Number five. Another character in this drama is Pontius Pilate, the reluctant judge. Who is a judge? According to the Cambridge Dictionary, a judge is a person or someone who is in charge of a trial in a court and decide how a person who is guilty of a crime should be punished. A judge also can be referred to as a person who has the knowledge to give an opinion about something or is able to decide if someone or something is good or bad. Then tell me, who is the real and the true judge? Of course God, because he is the one that knows the heart of every man. Even the secret of the heart. Psalm 44, verse 21. And by him, all actions are weighed. 1 Samuel 2, 3b. The heart of the kings and his hand. Proverbs 21, 1. And he searches and examines the heart of every one of us. Jeremiah 17, 10. So, how on earth will people expect Pilate to judge rightly? Someone with partial and incomplete knowledge, according to 1 Corinthians 13.9, the Bible says, For we know in part, 
Even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture, according to the New Living Translation. Just only part, not all. According to the account in Matthew 27, 19, Pilate's wife tried to dissuade him from crucifying Jesus. When Pilate was sitting on the judge seat, his wife sent him this message, don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. Even all four gospels make it clear that Pilate knew Jesus was innocent of any kind. If you put the gospel account together, it appears that Pilate tried four times to avoid sentencing Jesus to death. In John 18, 21, he told the Jew to try the case by themselves. In Luke chapter 23, verse 6, he sent the case to the herald. In John 19, 1 and 4, he tried to appease the Jew by scourging Jesus instead of crucifying him. In Mark 15, 9 to 11, he tried to make a deal, <laughs> but the people chose Barabbas instead. So Pilate, out of frustration, asked, what shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Unfortunately for Jesus, the people answered, crucify him. When Pilate saw that, he was getting nowhere, but instead an opera was starting. He took water, no water like some people will say, he took water and washed his hand in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. He said, it is your responsibility. Pilate did not understand Jesus completely, but he knew that he was innocent. Rather than standing up for Jesus, the truth, standing for the truth, at great personal cost, he faltered to blackmail from high-ranking Jewish official and mud mentality, letting the people show Jesus' faith as God has planned. So, Pilate's crime, in many ways, was worse than the sin of the chief priest. Mm -hmm. The chief priest thought Jesus was guilty and wanted him dead. But Pilate knew he was innocent and sent him to die anyway. He stole and hesitated and tried to pass the buck. He wouldn't decide, so the mob decided for him. Right, Dr. Richard. I would like to say at this junction that when you fail or refuse to take decision on the issue of destiny, mob, multitude, crowd may end up to be your decision maker. One of our fathers in the law said, and I quote, he said, it is detrimental to be sentimental about the issue of destiny. As believers, we can be thankful that God did not let any man or spirit stop his plan to send his son to die on a cross or rise from the dead. God's plan for salvation could not be stopped because Jesus cooperated with God and didn't lose focus of his purpose. And because he paid the only price that could be paid, there is hope for all who believe. So when people you thought could rise up to defend you were nowhere to be found, rejoice. It might be for your own good in order to fulfill your destiny. When the judgment isn't fair, how do you react? Some of us can identify with this kind of scenario very well. A situation where a thief is being preferred and a savior is being crucified. <laughs> so, so, so painful to bear. It can be so hurting. Are you cooperating with God? Are you focusing on your divine purpose? Are you also paying the price? What are the things that could probably stop you from fulfilling destiny? Destructive habits? Or you want to call it work of the flesh? Ungodly relationship? So-called loving wherever? Laziness? Lack of focus? Comment of people? Have you forgotten that people are entitled to their personal opinions? You can enjoy our productions, previous and new ones on our Facebook pages, God's Peculiar Treasures International Ministry or God's Peculiar Treasures International and also our YouTube channel, GPTIM TV. And of course, do not forget to like, 
comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That will be well appreciated. We also encourage you to click on the notification button to be alerted when new videos drop. God bless you as you do in Jesus' name. We shall need to continue this discussion on our next episode. Till then, bye for now. Peculiar treasure that is you. He calls me, he has made me a peculiar treasure. I'm so peculiar. I'm so glad I'm God's peculiar treasure. Thank you, Jesus. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice, indeed, and keep my call. be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people above all people for the end is mine I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so glad are you glad I'm so glad I'm a peculiar treasure